We counted them down all year, and now here are the top 22 of 2022. We begin with three dramatic game-tying baskets by women's basketball. Amanda Gorski against Washington College with three-tenths of a second remaining. Rachel Saxton banking in the three against her sinus with 7.4 seconds left. And Ava Conley off the save by Jenna Stockbauer at Johns Hopkins with 6.9 seconds left. At number 21, read em, roll em, hold em. It's Henry Stower making the long birdie putt at the Muhlenberg Invitational. At number 20, great goal by the field hockey team. Aaron Jackson up ahead to Abadiglio, who will fake out the goalie and then put it in the cage for one of her seven goals on the season. Another great goal at number 19 by Jack Kramer, a behind-the-back goal against McDaniel. At number 18, it's time to go to Duncan with the men's basketball team. One dunk by Noah Watson, two dunks by Jason Williams-Johnson, and three by Tommy McGuire. At number 17, Jillian Zach hit six home runs in her first season with the Mule softball team, including this inside the park home run against Albright for her first career home run. But she also earns this spot in the countdown for her defensive ability, here gunning down a runner at home plate against McDaniel, and here throwing out a runner at third base against rival Gettysburg. At number 16, it's a gallery of great goalkeeping, first for women's lacrosse, Ellison Irvin. For men's lacrosse, Max May. And for women's soccer, Sarah Pecarelli. At number 15 in his first season as a starter, Joe Rapetti ranked second among Division III sophomores with 33 touchdown passes and 41 total TDs. He got some help from his receivers. Great catches here from Timothy Buda and James Nye. At number 14, women's lacrosse season opener, Mules trailing Moravian 17-16 in the last minute, but with 58 seconds left, Nicole Steiner puts in a free position shot to tie the game. Just 26 seconds later, it's Madeline Dill with a free position shot of her own. The Mules win 18-17 with two last-minute goals. At number 13, two of the three goals scored by Chris Richards against Dickinson, the Mules' first hat-trick in men's soccer since 2012. Richards would go on to be named Centennial Conference Offensive Player of the Year. At number 12, another sort of hat-trick, Jonathan Toth hit not one, not two, but three home runs against New Jersey City, three of the school record tying 11 he hit on the season. Toth also set a school record with 13 total bases in the game. At number 11, men's basketball, upset nationally ranked Swarthmore on the road in January, and upset nationally ranked Johns Hopkins on the road in December. And what did the games have in common? These crazy spinning, turning moves by Giovanni Rubino leading to layups. At number 10, Alyssa Faville was on Plays of the Week quite a lot for her digs, digs that earned her first team all Centennial Conference honors and also all region honors, but her best play of the season may have been a kill. It was on match point in the Mules' win against Haverford. That win propelled the Mules to the Centennial Conference playoffs. At number 9, field hockey in overtime against nationally ranked Franklin and Marshall, and it's Kathy Barish playing her first game ever in goal, stopping this breakaway to preserve the tie. Turn. Shoot, save Mulford. Yes, the postseason was full of save Mulford. These are saves made by Ben Mulford just in the postseason. Mulford with four shutouts and five postseason starts. The freshman was named MVP of the Centennial Conference Tournament. Wrestler Luca Kolstock gets the nod at number seven. Not for this takedown right to a pin against Centenary and his reaction, although that's pretty cool but it's for winning his second straight Centennial Conference Championship at 197. It's Centennial Conference title number two for Colstock. At number six, football won a postseason game for the fifth straight season. Michael Feaster was named MVP after catching two touchdown passes. This one, a scintillating 60-yard touchdown pass with 62 of the yards coming after the catch. Muhlenberg won the Centennial Conference Mac Bowl game against Lebanon Valley 48-21. At number five is the tremendous effort by James Dalamonte in the men's lacrosse playoff game at Gettysburg. Dalamonte scoring seven goals to tie a Centennial Conference playoff record. His nine points tied a Centennial Conference playoff record as well as a school record. At number four, Centennial Conference champions in track. Indoors in the high jump, it's Ben Earhart. And outdoors in the discus, Dylan DeMagistris. In the javelin, Noel House. And in the triple jump, John Panny. At number three, wrestling regional 149-pound consolation final. 
Winner goes to Nationals, loser goes home. In overtime, it's Muhlenberg freshman Brandon Bowles scoring the takedown for sudden victory to earn a bid to Nationals, where he was joined by teammate Joey Lamparelli. And that brings us to our top two plays of the year, two championship winning plays, and for the first time we asked you, the fans, to vote for the top play of the year. We had over 400 votes, and by a margin of five votes, this is how it turned out. So our number two play of the year is Jake Mendelssohn's Centennial Conference championship winning penalty kick against Johns Hopkins, the Mules playing nationally ranked top seed Hopkins to a scoreless tie, winning in the shootout 5-4 for their seventh Centennial Conference championship and their first since 2014. And maybe you could say that this was the most important tournament in the world in 2022 that was decided by penalty kicks. Mendelssohn had two possible outcomes when he lined up for his penalty kick, make the kick and win the championship or miss the kick and the shootout would continue. But Sarah Karmazin had many outcomes when she stepped to the plate leading off the bottom of the ninth inning against Swarthmore. And just one of them was hitting a walk off home run to win the Centennial Conference Championship the sixth from Muhlenberg Softball, their first since 2011. It's our top play of the year. Thank you to everyone who voted in the poll, and thanks for your support of Muhlenberg Athletics. We'll be back with Plays of the Week in 2023 on January 10th. Until then, Happy New Year, and Go Mules!